Hello friends and welcome to Hi. Gibsonton. We're in Gibsonton today. What is the name of this course? This course is called the Showman's Disc Golf Course because it's connected to the Showman Museum. Yes, the American Showman's Museum. If you followed this channel for a while, you might have seen the video. If you haven't, I'll put a link to it right up there above Brett's head. Yep, there it is. Well, friends, I didn't clarify that the course that we're on is a disc golf course. We're throwing some plastic today. It's been a long time since I've thrown any plastic. Brett is an avid disc golf player. How, how often do you play? Ooh, right now it's about three degrees at home, so we haven't been playing as much. But Not as much. typically through the summer, well, actually, I got in 140 rounds this summer. 140 rounds. That's a lot of, that's a lot of throwing. When was the last time you played, Rob? Yeah, uh, last time he was down in Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a year and a half. Two years ago. Years ago. Yeah. There's some good courses around here. I've never played on this course. Sometimes you got to pay to play. Today it's $5 a person. They have a little honor box, so. And since we're honorable, we're going to let Brett pay for us. <laughs> Check this out. They got loner discs here. And a lost and found. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, a lost and found. So you just throw the disc you found in there and it's locked so you, you can't open it. It's cool. Nice ride, man. I've never really hung out in Gibsonton. It's an interesting place. There's all kinds of just wild home oh, Jeeves. <laughs> crazy things going on here. Now, Gibsonton is not known for disc golf. It's known for being the home of uh, showmen from all over the world. This was a hub where a lot of people from the entertainment industry in the early days of entertainment in the United States came here to live. It was warm here and it was a good home base. So a lot of people still live here in Gibsonton that are a part of the entertainment industry and there's some just interesting things going on around town from what I hear. This is cool. Look for this little cart and you'll find the first hole. I think this is the first hole, right? Yeah. This is hole number one. You're gonna see all kinds of cool stuff like this because the thing that makes this course special is it's built on the grounds of the Showman's Carnival Museum. So they're all around the grounds here. We have weird carnival stuff and I didn't old know carnival signs, old like Ringling Brothers uh, uh, cart stuff. It's gonna be really unique and really cool. You're gonna enjoy it. Let's go. First throw of the day. Oh, that was going right at it. Never thrown this one before. It is the beast. Just get it back there somewhere. That'll work. That'll work. Yeah. You'll be able to see up over that. Totally. <laughs> Here's your thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, check this out. They got a broom hanging up here. That's cool. So you can sweep off your area. Hole number one could be the coolest disc golf hole I've ever played on so far. Oh, so close. Oh, this is so cool. I love this. This is dope, man. <laughs> cool. Nope. Just a facade. All around this course, I'm noticing more and more things from like the circus or from fairs and stuff. It's cool, I can't wait to just keep going around and find out what all's here. It's like an old train car, some train wheels. Well, we got ourselves into a pickle. All three of us have thrown our discs in weird places. Well, except Brett, he's... <laughs> Brett is actually in a very good place. This was your first throw? Yeah, that's my first throw. Wow. 
I threw my disc very straight and nice, which was not exactly the direction I wanted to go, but I threw it over the fence and into the woods. So I gotta go searching. Looks like I'm not the only one to have done this. There's trails. Oh, I see it. There it is. He's back there shaking the chain so I know where to throw. Yeah, I gotta, can't see anything. Brett, we'll go this way because you're short, so. All the holes are labeled pretty well. It tells you how far you're throwing. Give you a little map, like most courses. Tough shot. Yep. Somewhere back there. Damn it. Cool sign. This is a great course. There's all kinds of like terrain to walk through. We just walked through a, a creek bed over here. It was dry. And there's like little obstacles around. This is great. I really like this course. Hole six is a long one, 480 feet. Wow. You see those signs right there on the palm trees that say Mando? That's what we call a mandatory. So the arrows are pointing in. Now this is actually a triple mandatory because there's two on the trees pointing in. So we have to go between those. And there's a big bar across the top and we can't go above that or outside of the palm trees. Have to hit this gap. Awesome, let's do this, watch this. Four hundred and twenty feet to the next hole. Hole eight. Here, right next to the fence line, are some golf course front properties in Gibsonton. Probably the only ones in Gibsonton. I don't think there's a golf course here. Friends. <laughs> well, friends, we're waiting on some guys to finish up on this hole. We've got a little bit of time to talk, and it's been a long time since I played disc golf, and I was just wondering what all the the technicalities are. What are the rules of disc golf? And Brett knows all about this. So Brett, why don't you tell us all for people that have never played, what's, what are we, what are we doing out here? So if you've never played disc golf before, it's very similar rules to golf. Uh, we're going out, we have par threes, par fours, par fives. Um, you throw from a tee box, uh, typically cement. You're throwing towards a basket, count your strokes. That's the very simple form of it. Now, considering the discs, you can see I've got a huge bag of discs. So I've got a bunch of them. You don't need all that. There's a putter that's really thick, really slow disc. That's what you're going to use to put in the basket typically. Most people starting out are going to want to throw a putter because it's made to throw slow and your arm speed is slow. So this is going to be a really, really nice disc. Um, you're, you're used to throwing these really lightweight plastic whammo frisbees and these are slightly different so it, it takes a bit to get used to it um, but it's all you need right there you can go out one disc throw just with a, putter. a good time just with a putter right. then there's also mid ranges slightly faster a little different profile on the edge Let's see okay I don't have any of those Nope. Yeah, these are really nice, typically good straight flyers, um, kind of the next step up from the putter as far as arm speed goes. Uh, really, really predictable discs in flight. So we know how those are going to fly. They do not all fly the same. That's why I have a bag full of, I've got 20 something discs here. Because uh, even like these two here, this is a buzz, this is a buzz, this is the exact same mold. Different plastic. They fly different. Interesting. Yeah. And then we have a driver. Really, really thin, really fast discs. Thick rim. Um, that's what I have here. Yep, that's what I'll you got there. With all day. Yep. 
And uh, they're a bit more unpredictable in flight, uh, a little more finicky on the angle of release, how you release it, and also angle of the nose on release. Um, so these are typically meant for somebody that uh, when you get into it a little bit more, you get a little better. Um, you throw these drivers, they're gonna work out really well. But what about scoring? So is scored the same way as like putt-putt or regular golf? Exactly, exactly the same way. One throw is one stroke. It's just like hitting the ball one time. You walk to your lie, uh, you pick up your disc, throw from that spot, um, yeah, just like golf. Yeah, you don't have to, there's different styles of throwing too, so you don't have to run up to it. And you can you can kind of adapt your own way about it, right? Exactly, so that's kind of the beautiful thing with disc golf. Um, golf, we know there's a pretty traditional swing. You can't vary from that. <laughs> you vary from it a little bit and, and you start splicing, slicing. Um, so with, these guys um, there are several different ways there's a traditional backhand like just like most people would throw a frisbee uh, then there's also a forehand little flick um, that's going to cause the disc to go the other direction sometimes you have no choice when you're in these really thick woods and say I've got to go through the trees here I can't like traditionally throw a frisbee through this gap right however when the disc goes like this it's very narrow so then we can throw it and it'll actually fly through the air, do some crazy stuff, but it'll cut through trees and tight spots. You can also throw with your thumb in there to get the opposite action. Um, I always tell people, I take my friends out for the first time, I tell them, don't worry really about how you're throwing, just have fun, uh, that's what we're out here for. Um, I don't care if you kick the thing into the basket, it doesn't matter. Put it in the basket, have a good time, and enjoy it. That's the, the simple gist of it. So, go grab a disc, Tupperware lid, whatever you got that flies, go chuck some plastic. Speaking of having a good time and enjoying, it's time to throw on hole number 10. Now, Brett. Yo. Uh, thanks for explaining all that. It's very, exactly. very educational. Mm -hmm. But I have one thing that I'd like to ask you. So, uh, so I've been told not to call these the F word. Frisbees? Yeah. These are discs, right? Because it's, it's not the brand. Or what is your opinion on this? Correct. So, yeah, the Whammos or the Frisbee, that's your typical lightweight. My beach. favorite, the Aerobee. The Aerobee, there that you go. That is the greatest of yep, throwing Aerobee. discs. Uh, or disc, Frisbees, whatever Discraft you want to call Discraft Ultra Star, if you're into throwing Frisbees, is a great Frisbee as well. Um, but, yeah, these are discs. Um, I don't get offended if you call it a Frisbee. It's a Frisbee. Okay. And it's round. It's pie-shaped. flies through the air. So you're a pretty non-offended type of guy. Yeah, anyway. I don't get offended by it. So. Um, I don't care, but yeah, these are going to be technically called discs. More education. Yeah. Beautiful shot. Yep. That one. First available. <laughs> That's all right. I found the way. Well, this is a long course, guys, but I didn't know it was that long. Rob here was explaining something to me that I did not know. And I've seen this before, but I didn't, I should have put, you know, one and two together. But when you see names written on the basket. On the baskets, usually. And. And on uh, the signs, apparently. That's yeah. new for me, but. Yeah, so when you see I the names, it means. It means that that person has aced this whole hold in one. That's, so that's, that's your honor. It's, it's acceptable graffiti. Sign yeah. your name under the basket when you get an ace. I've seen it. I just thought people were you know, just writing their names yeah, out there yeah. with the date on it. You, know, you see was that. here. Yeah. yeah. But no. No, the hole in ones. Cool. I've never got a hole in one. Have you got a hole in one? I've had two. Oh, Brett, cool. Brett's had, like, he, he lost count. Yeah, I lost track. I don't know. I've had, oh, uh, he's lost had track two. of how many hole in ones he's had. I had two last year. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's, that is really cool. Nothing fine and dandy about that lake. Oh, okay. This is an interesting fairway. Uh, check this out. Would you call this a fairway? Or would this be like a... Is there a different name for a gigantic slimy green obstacle? If you landed in it, I don't think I would say you hit the fairway. Okay. No. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah.
Well, Rob, that's not the first time you've dropped important things in the water, huh? No, no. no. It's all right, though. It's yeah. all right. I wonder if Bryce will fix that. <laughs> Nice. Now this nice golfer, let me take a look at his car. This is sweet. Wow. So all three of us today are carrying these bags. You know, I've had this for probably 20 some years. You know, Brett's got, he's upgraded actually. You carry one of those carts, don't you? Yeah, I carry, it's called a Zuka cart. And uh, man, it's a pull behind cart. So you just pull it right behind you on the wheels. Uh, that baby is like all terrain, man. You go huh. anywhere with it. It's super smooth and really easy to pull the discs. And then you don't have the strap on your shoulder all day if you're oh, doing yeah. tournaments and long day stuff. When are you going to upgrade to a golf cart? Uh, a regular, like a driving golf cart? Yeah. Dude, I'm in. Let's go. I think so. We need it's to build a course. Idea. Hmm. Build it and they will come. That's what they say. Uh, guys, look out for moose. Looks like out here. Hole 11. I think that's the rest of the Gravitron. Well, this one's still got the lights in it. All the electronics. Oh, nice! <laughs> Through the window! <laughs> this is interesting. It's a Mando drop zone. What that Mando drop zone is, is it's a Mando, so you have to go left of it. If you miss it and you end up right of it, um, you have to take your one stroke penalty and then there's a drop zone where you would throw from. So you'd be throwing oh, three got from it. the drop zone. Cool. Oh, okay. Looks like whoever put this course together was running out of props around hole 13. There's still some cool stuff to, to see though, such as this hole 14, check it out. Yeah. The throw barrel. Oh! Oh, smoke me! Alright. Yeah, you might be. No! Oh, it's okay. Looks like we have a couple of tugboats here. Well, I have again lost a disc, but the nice thing about this course is that everything's pretty open. There's no like poison ivy or anything you got to crawl through to get to, to your disc. You get my T-Rex arm up there. So I was just shooting and it bounced off the chain and fell in and I asked Brett, does that count? He said, there is no count for that. If you hit the chains, bounce out, no go. It has to, if you sit up top, no go. It has to cross the plane between the bottom of the band and the basket. Hmm. If it somehow be balanced in there, it's crossed that plane, it's good. Cool. So what if you get it in the basket up top? Um, one in wins a choice, so I'm hoping there's like a cool teddy bear at the end of this. <laughs> Wait, did you pay your two dollars? I did. Two holes, one tee. Entering the last hole, the Tilt-A-Whirl. Hey Rob, do you think it was that good luck charm hanging in the tree that helped you out there? I think it may have been. Yeah. Good lucky horse. Yeah. Right by these old train trailers is the last poles. Carney Disc Golf Club is what it's called. You're behind the truck. Oh! Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Well, guys, this has been a really fun day. Yeah. Throwing some plastic around. I've done it in a long time. Some so. discs, some frisbees, whatever you want to call it. Great day. Learn Tropi some tropical vibes on the disc golf yeah. course, man. In January, what's today? The 9th? 9th, I believe, yes. January 9th. And it is beautiful out. Yeah, it's sweating. Really, yeah, sweating a little bit. It's a great day. This has been really fun. Thanks for teaching us a little bit about this. Yeah, Telling thanks us about for having the, me. The, what I thought was graffiti. Cool. Approved graffiti. Approved graffiti. Friends, if you want to play disc golf, it's pretty easy to get into. And if you get a course like this that has loaner discs, well, you can just get yourself out there and start playing. It's cool having you along, friends. And yeah. you guys too. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> for any of you guys that want to check out disc golf, you can typically look it up on Google Maps, something like that, but also pdga.com, that is P-D-G-A, Professional Disc Golf Association.com. They have a course directory there. You can look it up and find your local course and go out and have some fun. Cool. Brett also has a channel himself. Oh yeah, Brett, tell us about your channel. I do, so I've got uh, my channel on YouTube. It's uh, Brett Marshall. And I do a lot of kite stuff on there, and I'm getting into some adventure stuff as well and kind of tying the two together. Uh, it's a really cool vibe, long videos, so definitely bring the popcorn and uh, kick back and relax. But please, come check it out. And you can find Rob on Instagram. He's got a really cool photography feed. It's uh, NR2 Productions, NR numeral 2 Productions. Or, uh, I'll put a link to both of these guys' channels below. You can find out the cool things that they're doing. Our friends, thanks for joining us. If you like what you're seeing, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next video.